Hi VC, how you doing? Uh, Alex, coming at you here from California. Uh, got a little bit softer, what's playing in the background right now is this guy here. This is uh, Akira Sakata on uh, alto sax. Uh, Masahito Sato on piano. Um, this was recorded in 2015. Um, Tokyo at the Pit Inn Club. Um, this one was just released uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's on uh, Family Vineyard. It's the label. Uh, really cool uh, Japanese free jazz session with uh, Chris Corsano on drums. Uh, and then uh, Darren Gray on bass. Really cool stuff. Uh, fantastic cover there with uh, like an alley in uh, Tokyo. Highly recommended. Uh, I think it's only limited to 500, so probably will sell out at some point. So I was in Chicago over uh, Christmas break. Uh, and uh, you know, I was able to to go to uh, Dusty Groove Records uh, in Chicago. Uh, fantastic uh, record store that specializes in uh, you know soul jazz, uh, world music, that kind of stuff. Uh, many of you guys probably have ordered online from them or even uh, visited uh, them. Um, I used to live about half a mile from there, but. You know, at the time, I, I really wasn't uh, collecting jazz. I did start my jazz collection uh, with records from there, but uh, really never, never appreciated that store for what it was till I uh, just visited here in December. Um, so this is kind of some of the stuff that I found there. Uh, Steve Lacey record. I believe it's from 1959. This is a. Uh, OJC reissue. Um, I didn't realize uh, until somebody pointed out that uh, I think Teddy had actually talked extensively about this one in, in one of his videos not, not too long ago. Um, so these are uh, Thelonious Monk uh, pieces uh, played by uh, Lacey. Um, and yeah, Elvin Jones is on in this group Mel Waldron on piano and uh, Buell Nalliger on, on bass so really really awesome uh, lineup um, it's got uh, seven tracks highly recommended um, you know around the same time I started reading out uh, this book uh, as serious as your life uh, the Story of the New Jazz by Valerie Wilmer. Um, I haven't finished it yet, but yeah, early chapters talk a lot about the importance of uh, Steve Lacey in particular and his influence on Coltrane. Um, and then also about this guy. So this is um, Cecil Taylor, uh, Jazz Advance. Uh, I had never, I was not aware of this record. Um, this one is also at uh, Dusty Groove. Uh, it's a Japanese pressing. Um, there's not a whole lot of information on the sleeve, and I uh, didn't really have time to, to do a whole lot of research. But, you know, having been reading about Cecil Taylor, I really w wanted to, to uh, you know, uh, discover more of his music. And so it was a bit of a blind buy. It wasn't particularly cheap, but, uh, you know, Japanese pressing, really mint shape. I uh, thought it was a, a pretty good buy. And yeah, it's, this is excellent. This is actually from 1956. Um, and yeah, it, it really, even in 56, you can tell how, how far ahead he was with his ideas. And, you know, to my ears, is more rooted in, uh, 
avant-garde uh, and modern classical music than any of the you know jazz idioms you know that were that you know that would become bop and post-bop um, you know in the late 50s and early 60s so really cool uh, early uh, Cecil Taylor album um, this one is um, a reissue from 1979 I think the original uh, was a Japanese from uh, 56 so Cecil Taylor jazz advance highly recommended <clears throat> another Japanese record I got uh, there uh, was this one uh, Billy Harper this one was a Japanese only uh, release on uh, the denim label uh, really cool Obi I think uh, yeah I know Tom has this one too I know he's a big uh, Billy Harper fan yeah this is smoking uh, live session not a bad track on there um, highly recommended for all fans of uh, Billy Harper you know 70s uh, spiritual jazz Um, Sonny Murray had just uh, passed away so he also was on my mind and he's also mentioned in the book uh, extensively um, and I found this one as well at uh, Dusty Groove uh, The Untouchable Factor um, so let me see who's on this one so Sonny Murray is the leader of this group uh, we got uh, Byard Lancaster on reeds, uh, Dave Burrell on piano, Bob Reed, uh, I'm not sure I'm real familiar with him on bass, uh, there they are, but yeah this one also is, uh, so this is from 1977, so a little bit later, uh, you know, free jazz uh, session. Um, yeah, I'm a big, uh, big Sonny Murray fan, big Bard Lancaster fan, big Dave Burrell fan, so if you like any of those guys, it's worth checking out. It's, you know, definitely a very, a very free uh, session, but uh, really cool. Uh, there's another Sonny Murray that uh, I found there at Dusty Groove. Um, I had this one a couple of years ago and then I, I sold it for some reason. Um, but here it is again. Uh, this is uh, Sonny Murray's Untouchable Factor, Apple Cores. Uh, it's a larger ensemble with uh, notably Cecil McBee, Oliver Lake, Don Pullen, among others. Um, I haven't re-listened to this one yet, but from what I recall, and I think why I sold it the first time is I think Side One is really, uh, was really straight ahead and maybe, um, I don't know, I it didn't sit right. I, side Two is really good, uh, so I'm definitely worth it for that, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to revisiting this one. Um, I think that's all I pulled here from the stuff that I found at Dusty Groove. Um, this is one that I just got about a week ago. Uh, this is very much a, a grail. Um, you know, I know this is, um, you know, a, a VC, uh, you know, favorite uh, Horace Taps, Tapscott Quintet. The Giant is Awakened. Um, you know they, these are becoming super super scarce you know I had a there was a seller who seemed to be pretty motivated so I um, you know I just threw him an offer as to you know what, what I could afford for it and we came to a pretty reasonable agreement so I'm really happy in the uh, the sleeve has you know 
few nicks here and there, but uh, the record is in beautiful shape. Uh, as I'm flying Dutchman from 1969. Um, yeah, I think this is the first album with uh, Tap Scott as the leader. Um, you know, he had been playing piano all throughout the 60s with uh, several different groups. Uh, I think in the LA area in particular and um, so yeah as far as I can tell this is his first recording as a as a leader um, he was already about 35 years old uh, during this recording and then uh, recorded a bunch with uh, a Nimbus in the 70s but yeah this is the only record that I have of his I think a lot of his other ones are pretty hard to find too so but yeah if you know if you don't know Side two of this record is, you know, it's a top ten track for me of all time. Awesome. Turn on some light here. There we go. It's getting a little dark in here. Uh, another grail that I've recently got. Um, there's a local, not local, but there was a seller uh, in the Bay Area that uh, was selling uh, this fantastic record. And, uh, you know, again, I, you know, kind of negotiated them to a, to a pretty, really good price, actually. And, uh, you know, when I first got this in the mail, I thought, when I first opened it, I really thought that maybe it was a reissue, because it was, you know, the cover is, is in such good shape. Um, you know, and I do have the, the reissue that came out a couple of years ago and yeah they, they actually the cover is, is a pretty much identical um i don't think it's got the, the brain label on there but but yeah it, indeed it is a an original uh, metronome green brain label um it sounds fantastic and uh yeah it's one of my all-time uh favorite crowd rock records um you know, side one is, you know, super psychedelic. Side two is more ambient, chilled. But yeah, I think both sides are, are superb. It's yeah, definitely one of the high points of the genre for me, and now one of the cornerstones of the, the collection. Um, so this one, uh, this one just came in the mail today. Uh, Alan Silva has a Celestial Communication Orchestra Lunar Surface on the actual BYG. This is uh, an early one, number 12. Uh, yeah, it covers a little, a little bit of water damage on there, but uh, yeah, yeah, the record's not too bad. I uh, got a good tail on it. Um, had been my, on my want list for a while. Um, and then I saw, uh, I think Derek, I think it, he's got this one and there's a, I think there's like a second part to this one that uh, he was uh, raving about. So I uh, decided to pull the trigger on it. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I think uh, Leroy Jenkins and Anthony Braxton are on this one. You know, both of them guys that I uh, really enjoyed listening to. Um, Leroy Jenkins in particular stands out here, uh, even though it's a larger group. You know, since the his violin is, is at a much higher frequency, you can definitely, uh, you know, he definitely stands out. Um, and yeah, his playing is, is fantastic. So, um, so the seller he sent me a a bonus record with that one. Um, I guess something that he. Uh, didn't want anymore. Um, another Steve Lacey. Uh, this one, a later one from 1979. Um, I, I think the label is called uh, WZA. It looks like it's uh, maybe a Canadian label. I haven't done a whole lot of research on it. but um, And I'm not familiar with the uh, trumpet player uh, Walter Zuber Armstrong that uh, but it's basically uh, just a, a just a duet, uh, Lacey and uh, and Armstrong here. 
pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I like it a lot. Very, uh, uh, yeah, free improv, avant-garde, and just uh, the two of them. And, uh, recorded in uh, Amsterdam, uh, so that, I'm sure that picture is taken there. Really cool picture of those two uh, guys walking down the street. And then, uh, yeah, one last one here. Uh, this is uh, Wildflower, self-titled, uh, was released last year. Um, self-released um, copies were, or small batches were being uh, sold on uh, by the artist on uh, Bandcamp. This is the I think the third pressing of this. Um, So there's a, a trio, it's um, Idris Rahman on saxophone, uh, Leon Bouchard on bass, and Tom Skinner on drums. Um, not familiar with these guys, uh, I believe they're based out of the UK. Um, just really top-notch, uh, you know, modern, you know, I'm going to call it spiritual jazz for lack of a better word, but, you know, sort of. Eastern influenced, uh, you know, groove, you know, very groovy uh, 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 trio jazz, um, really catchy, listenable, uh, very, very cool. Um, I think he might be sold out. I don't know. I think some of the, some folks in the VC were trying to see if they could find the copy still, but um, mostly, hopefully, he uh, pressed a few more. Uh, yeah, really cool cover. Um, highly recommended. Um, it's available digitally and on CD as well, so definitely ways to, to get a hold of this. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I'm going to show for right now. Um, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, Diana, thanks for uh, doing the contest. Uh, uh, and I, I look forward to, to uh, yeah, seeing what you send over. Uh, cheers, guys. Bye.